Hello, my Sock Universe. The October international break is upon us, and I hear most of you screaming, Why do we have the international break? Everything is rolling so fine. Honestly, we need the breather a little bit, and I actually like international sock a whole lot. So I'm actually looking forward to this one. And it's always nicer to not have this frantic pace of Champions League, Domestic League, Champions League, Domestic League, and so many games. They're all cools a little bit down. And yes, most of us will be in trepidation with our favorite players who are now off with the national teams. Will they come back healthy? I totally understand that. But you know, all these players get even injured during league play. And I don't see why this is more damning if they're getting injured on international duty than if they do so when they play for their nation, which should be honestly the highest honor for every player. I also, you can see I'm not standing in the center. I want to try something a little bit different for this video. I actually want to see if I can hide this little blank spot here. Maybe me being off center and maybe pulling in the graphics from this side might work a teeny bit better. It's just an experiment. Hang with me there. What I want to do in this video, since the international break starts today, Thursday, I wanna tell you which games you should look out for, especially in the upcoming three days. And then of course, also we look a little bit further for until Tuesday. So you have the entire program, which matches are worth your time watching, which ones you might not. And I wanna do this league by league and we have to start at the very bottom. Let's go to League D. I have to repeat it because it's so amazing. In League D1, San Marino are the leaders. So have that in mind, where Gibraltar and Liechtenstein are only on one point each. Where in League D2, Moldova lead currently with only a single win. However, if you look now at the upcoming matches, we see that Moldova with another home win. This time over Andorra, who are in last place, can really put themselves in a super position of advancing to League C. And then, of course, we have Gibraltar against San Marino. Should San Marino get a point out of this game? San Marino are still in first place and actually would probably look odds on to advance. However, we know that Gibraltar is not a bad team overall among these. And then we get two more League D matches on Sunday. Liechtenstein against Gibraltar, depending on what Gibraltar did against San Marino. This could be a really interesting one. And Malta against Moldova. This could be a last ditch chance for Malta to get back into the game. I love League D. After League A, this is probably my favorite one because this is where it's really at. This is why the Nations League has been made. League C1, we had Sweden and Slovakia really romping through the competition so far. Of course, they're gonna meet now. That's gonna be an exciting match. League C2, Romania very much on top of that group. League C3, relatively open. Bulgaria at the moment leading, but Belarus and Northern Ireland, it's very, very, very tight. And then we, of course, have North Macedonia having a slight advantage over Armenia and Latvia, another really tight group as well. So let's look at the matches for these. Here, it starts and stops on Friday, 8.45, Slovakia against Sweden. I think it's cool be a really 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 interesting one of course everything with bulgaria luxembourg belarus northern ireland is also interesting because the group is so tight i want to see what romania can do in cyprus whether they can keep on with their great pace we'll look for the bulgaria group we'll get probably a little bit more knowledge when northern ireland take on bulgaria at home we also have armenia against north macedonia this will be a major matchup in that group as well League B, where Austria, who I'm wearing, of course my home country, is situated, but we'll start with Group B1. Georgia is leading the group ahead of Albania. Georgia, of course, the story so far. Can they make it all the way to League A? This would be an amazing story. The Czech Republic and Ukraine, the two teams that were favored ahead of this group, are currently sitting only in third and fourth. And as we've seen with Ukrainian teams in the Champions League and the Europa League, Ukraine probably is now really taking a toll from all the troubles and travails that happen in their home country, of course. We have in Group B2, Greece and England, all on six points. Greece having for now the better goal difference. I guess England will have to rectify that one. Group B3 is where Austria is in there. Slovenia at the moment leads at level on points with Norway. Austria only on a single point. Austria in really dire need of getting wins. And going into this international break, now the talking point is that Austria are now winless in three games, which going out of the Euro sounds a little bit odd to be honest. And then we have, of course, Group B4 also very wide open, although this should be between Turkey and Wales. Not sure if Iceland will really keep on there. 
And so we have Norway against Slovenia already on Thursday evening. Austria will play, of course, Kazakhstan at home in Linz. Won't be there at the same time. I think England, Greece will be a really interesting one. Yes, England should be the big favorites, but Greece have been showing some good stuff. Then we have, of course, Czech Republic against Albania. There's not only some qualifying pains for the Czechs, but also in this group. Really, really important as is Ukraine against Georgia. And then, yeah, the Iceland Wales game could be an interesting one. On Sunday, I will be at Austria against Norway. Really looking forward to that game. That's a big one. If Austria has to win against Kazakhstan, they will also have to beat Norway to have a realistic chance of advancing with Finland, England. Probably not a big one, but Georgia, Albania. That's definitely one to watch. As is probably Iceland against Turkey. Because, you know, Turkey going all the way up north, never an easy one. And finally... League A. In Group A1, we have Portugal ahead of Croatia, Poland, Scotland already at a distance. Yes, Poland got the win in Scotland, but I think it will be between Portugal and Croatia to go to the quarterfinals. We have then in A2, Italy leading that group ahead of France and Belgium, with Belgium definitely outside looking in. Germany and Netherlands are the class of their group. Look just at the goals forward and the goals against. This tells you a whole lot of story. These teams have been very, very entertaining. And then Denmark for now is ahead of Spain. They got two home wins, which is definitely easy. Spain now will have to beat Denmark to really put control on the group. But you know, players are getting injured and so on. Will this be the same Spain that we saw at the Euros? That will also be an interesting part. So let's look at the matches. We have Italy against Belgium on Thursday evening. It's already quite interesting with Italy, who had two away wins already. Get the home win and you're really in full control of that group. Friday, I think Hungary against Netherlands will be quite an interesting one. We have, of course, Poland against Portugal. Lewandowski taking on Cristiano Ronaldo. Yes, this sounds like a decade ago, but Still an interesting game to see. And then Spain against Denmark. Definitely a good one on Saturday. Then match day four on Monday. We have Belgium against France. You know, Belgium is like the little brother to France. They really would like to get something. Out. And of course, we have Germany against the Netherlands. I mean, this is for me the other big game in this entire set of fixtures. If I take Austria games apart, Germany against the Netherlands. Just a classic rivalry. Gotta watch that one. And I don't know why Spain against Serbia. I always overestimate the Serbians. But I guess Switzerland, Denmark, there's a little bit more at stake there. So that's it from me. These are the matches to look forward to. Yes, I will be almost exclusively focusing only on the Nations League. There is also some World Cup qualifiers going on in South America and in Asia. There is Africa Cup of Nations qualifying, which I will definitely ignore. But I can probably imagine that at the end of this entire window, I will do a little bit World Cup qualifying roundup. But it also depends how much time I have to prepare graphs and so on. So Nations League will probably be the main program you will get after every match day quick short videos that I will then put together to make a longer review video and give you also my thoughts on where things are. And of course, I'm going to Austria against Norway. will give you a little bit my impression there as well. This time I will be only going alone Sunday late. It's a school night in a way, so it's not very family friendly, unfortunately. Any case, will you see any games? Are you going to any ones? Which games are you looking forward to? Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel, we'll see more. Also, let me know how you like me a little bit off center. Is this better? Is this worse? Just let me know, and I will talk to you soon about more things in my soccer universe. Bye! Hey there! I really hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye!